Hey, welcome to Conversations with a Therapist podcast. I'm Jennifer Chalo, I'm a counseling psychologist and I'm a writer and I'm also the host of this show. My work focuses on breaking down complex psychological concepts into practical and actionable frameworks that you can implement today to build a meaningful life. If that is something that you're interested in, then I highly, highly encourage you to subscribe to this podcast and share the link with at least one person in your contact list. You never know who desperately needs to hear this message today. And you could be the person that connects them to a resource that changes the rest of their life. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions about psychology, then send them to the email address in the description box. With that said, let's jump right into today's episode. One thing about me is that I love step-by-step breakdowns of how things happen. In this episode, that's exactly what I'll be doing. I'll be sharing with you the step-by-step breakdown of how a person becomes indoctrinated into a cult. This is episode 6. For those who are new here, we are talking about cults. We have been talking about cults from the beginning. And if you have not had a chance to listen to the other episodes, I highly encourage that you do so. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to figure out how people get into cults, why people get into cults, and the psychology of cults, the anatomy of a cult. Are you in a cult? All those questions have been answered in previous episodes, and so I highly encourage you to listen to them. Um, yeah, so with this episode, we are going to be talking a lot about um, the process of indoctrination. How do people get into cults? What is the step-by-step process? Where? How does it start? How do you end up in a cult? The first step is the initial contact Ordinarily, a person comes into contact with a cult through either a friend, a family member, or a recruitment event. Remember, as I said in a previous episode, word of mouth is one of the most effective strategies that cults and cult leaders use to recruit people to their movements. So, word of mouth is very, very uh, powerful. People listen to their friends when they recommend things to them. We trust those personal recommendations because we trust the people who are telling us about these things. Remember, if you are walking down the street, somebody cannot just grab you and uh, put you into a cult or recruit you into a cult by force. You will realize that most people who have joined cults will tell you that they joined through a friend or a family member. And if it's not that, then maybe they went to an event that they were invited to by someone they knew or somebody who convinced them, switch talk to them into going to that recruitment event. So most people we know and, uh, and and we trust will tell us about the movements they belong to and that is the easiest way for us to get sucked into a cult because we are taking information from somebody we know and trust. The, the cult leaders, the cult movement relies on that trust that we have built with the people that belong in their movement because they know if we hear a friend tell us about a place they belong to or a group they belong to, we are likely to check it out because we trust these people. So that is the initial contact. They will always try to find somebody you know or um, somebody you trust to get you to bring to, to come to the organization, to the cult, to the meeting. They will have this thing where they keep saying, uh, bring a friend. Where if you're a cult member, you'll hear people, the, your, your movement leaders telling you, and next time when you're coming through, bring a friend, bring a sister, a brother, bring somebody that you know, bring one person to, to the next meeting. And that is just a recruitment technique. If you ever joined a cult and you're looking back and trying to figure out how you ended up there, try to remember who who um, invited you to that movement. How did you end up there? And you're going to find out it's probably somebody that you trusted, somebody who invited you because they used to go there. It's really just some random person on the street. And if it is, they have strategies of sweet-talking you into joining the cult. The second step is building rapport. Cult members always begin to build rapport using techniques such as uh, love bombing, and, and they try to create a sense of connection and trust with you. Uh, I, I spoke about love bombing in a previous episode and you will notice those techniques that they use. They're praising you, they're speaking to your weaknesses, making you feel like you're special, making, making it seem like they have all the answers to get you to trust them and to get you to join their movement because they will make you feel that you are very special and you have been called on this journey to be with them and to join the movement and to spread the word that they have. And so they will try to build rapport with you. They will try to um, make you feel that you are special, make you feel that you are a friend, create this sense of connection with you, try to make you feel that uh, you you are really an important person and they are really blessed and happy to be in your presence because now you're going to join them and you're going to do big and great works, you know. 
and so that is just a technique to build rapport so that you can trust them if you trust them it's easier for them to convince you about the things that they're telling you so for example in the previous point where i've said uh, the initial contact if you're dealing with somebody maybe it's a recruitment event or somebody down the street who just invites you to their movement they will need to build rapport with you because you don't know them well enough and you you obviously don't trust them uh so if if they they can build rapport with you they can try to make that feeling of connection and belonging very early on uh to make you feel uh, that you can trust them that will be easier for them to convince you to come to their movement and that is just a technique again to get you to trust them the third step is sharing of information so cult leaders and cults in general start sharing information with you such as um the the their teachings their literature uh, the promotional material they have that promotes their world view and their beliefs um they will they will tell you about the things they are doing in the organization so for example again this is not a criticism directly to any special organization or any specific organization but for example with Jehovah's Witness I know they have the watchtower this the watchtower uh, material paraphernalia that they have that they share with people um that is that is them telling you about their world view and they need to get to with as many a uh, reading material as th- as they can they can find and so that is just one example i'm not saying jehovah witness is a cult please jw's do not come for me i'm just giving an example of the fact that jehovah's witness have their own uh literature that they share with new members of the organization uh the movement the church and yeah so in general a cult uh, will always share with you the information that um promotes their world view they will try to help you get access to videos and 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 speakers in who who speak a lot who are vocal about the cult and and the movement people who can help you understand the movement and and get you to trust and and believe that the movement is good and legit and a place that you should be spending your time and energy and resources uh they will ask you also to share about yourself a lot they will ask a lot of questions about you and what what you're going through if you're struggling with something maybe they found in a very vulnerable place they will try to get you to speak about what you're going through um they will ask you very intrusive questions questions that ordinarily you would not answer you know and they're trying to make you squirm they're trying to see how how far they can push um they can push you how much they how far they can push the agenda on you um if if it's like a, a recruitment event you're going to see that the agents in in the event the people now who belong to the cult and they are the the, the workers let me call, call them the workers the people who are getting to interact with the crowd when the speaker is on the stage those people will will try to spot the most susceptible people and the most compliant people and they will put pressure on them they will they, you will see you will see people being called to the front when when the person on stage says uh, everybody get on your feet the person who stands up the fastest the person who who seems to be very uh, keen with that message and is com- complying very easily that's the person that the the agents roaming the crowd will will be looking to interact with that's the person who will be called on stage and they will they will the person on stage will make you speak about yourself they'll ask you very personal questions they'll ask you things that you would ordinarily not tell strangers things you'd not ordinarily speak about in in the presence of so many people those are things that they will make ask you and they will tell you, uh, you you tell us about those things just to make you squirm just to make you feel a bit uncomfortable just to spotlight you to make sure that uh, you feel that everybody is looking at you and listening to you and 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 that is just a strategy to make you feel that um you can you you, you can trust yourself and and you will notice that people who are less compliant people who are a bit resistant when some of these things are done or like you're taking you're called up to the stage and you are resistant that person will probably be not the person that will be called on stage most likely that person will be left alone you know so those are all techniques um again another way of them sharing information is that they will invite you to come to more meetings they will um slowly start making commitments and and making you make commitments on your time and your resources and labor and money and especially resources you could be spending in other places so when they invite you to to these other meetings that they will invite you to every week you utaskia kuna another meeting you should come to this uh, outreach we have uh, a mission we have to do all these things they will never be put on times that you actually have time to do them it will be times that you would ordinarily be spending that time with uh, with your loved ones or on other activities that develop you develop you or make you feel better you know so for example they will they can put an event on let's say a saturday a saturday afternoon a day you would probably be spending with your family members or you're going to to uh, hang out with some friends or something they will they might put something on a sunday when ordinarily you would go to your 
kawaida church or, or go somewhere else with your family members that's the day they will put an event so that you have to pick you have to make a choice and remember as i said previously um these commitments in time these commitments in resources in money in labor all these commitments are uh, are are going to make it harder for you to walk away when things start looking bad because you're going to be like i've already committed too much this cannot be wrong this cannot be um this cannot be a, a bad thing you know you have to convince yourself that what you're doing is legit and it's good and it's something that you want to be doing so these commitments are just strategies to make sure that you have enough material to convince yourself that what you're doing is right and proper and it is what you want so yeah that is how they they try to manipulate you pole pole into making very small commitments in the beginning and then with time huge commitments abandoning the people that you love and care for they will ask you not to interact with those people they will isolate you and these small commitments are are just a gateway they are just a, a, a strategy used to to make it easier for them to convince you in future why you need to be hanging out with them more and um staying away from the other people in your life uh step number 4 is isolation and and i think i hinted on it in the previous uh, in the previous uh, point so the the thing about isolation is that for a cult and cult leaders in general to make you a committed um follower they need to isolate you from your friends and your family and and outside influences that could make um you think harder about the organization or movement you're joining remember they they need to control you they need to control your behavior and your beliefs and the only way they can do that is if they can isolate you and you don't have other people outside to bounce to bounce off ideas with you know so isolation creates a very fertile ground for a cult leader to create a new reality for you they will only show you the information that confirms your biases and the biases that they are trying to sell you um they they have to convince you that everything they are telling you is true and they have to create this new reality for you and and make sure that this reality aligns with the group and aligns with the cult and the beliefs of the cult the world view of the cult um the, their interest is that you will become increasingly separated from your former life including your friends your family uh, your job previous previous beliefs that you've always held your former values they want you they want you to step away from those things completely because if you're still holding on to those things it it is harder for them to convince you, to convince you that their world view is what you need to be following so that is a strategy that they will try to isolate you they will try to make sure that they can get you alone they can get to your mind they can give you information that is only limited and only confirms the biases that they have already sold you that you do not have other people to ask questions you to interact with to 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 um bounce off ideas with you don't have that because you only interact with the people in the group you only interact with um your fellow cult members that is just a strategy be be keen be on the lookout be on the lookout that when, when people start isolating you when your movement the thing you belong to starts isolating you and and sometimes even taking you away from from your kawaida environment think about how shakahola when you read the reports you're going to see that they said um the the the, the church and and mackenzie and these people took everyone and uh, and and removed them from the their community within their home they removed them from there and they took them to an isolated area in the in deep in the forest they took them to a forest and and that is where they camped and you you could not access your friends you could not access your family members because you were away and you were removed you were completely isolated so you can see this isolation tactic at play step number 5 is where all the action happens if not all the action at least most of it it happens in step number 5 which is control in control i want you to have the bite model at the back of your mind when i speak about how cults control you so the bite model stands for b behavior i information t thoughts and e emotions cults and cult leaders will try to control your bite your behavior your information your thoughts and your emotions so that they can take control over you they can manipulate you and they can have power over you the first aspect of control when it comes to behavior is that um they will dictate the the daily routines that you can have they will determine what time you wake up what time you go to sleep the kind of work you do uh, the things you do you don't have the freedom to do whatever you want you will have to ask for permission sometimes for you to attend different events or to do other things to hang out with different people so they will have to control your behavior in its entirety so that you can conform to what the group is doing you will see that there is going to be 
uh, use of rewards and punishments. I think I've mentioned this in a previous episode. The use of rewards when you do something that the cult approves of, you're going to be rewarded in one way or another. It could be material rewards, it could be emotional rewards, it could be praise. If you do not do things that the cult approves of, if you do things that they are considering to be negative or things not advancing the agenda of the cult, then you will be punished. The punishment could be physical, it could be any kind of punishment. It could be them withholding their love and attention from you. Um, it could be them treating you differently, isolating you, keeping you away from other members of the group just to make you feel that you're completely uh, isolated and there's no one for you. And these tactics are all used to make you obedient so that you can you can continue doing what the cult wants, what the cult leader wants. Um, that's the first aspect of control. They have to control your behavior. You'll find that you'll be given a lot of work sometimes, work that you don't want to do, but because it is part of the cult and its requirements, you'll have to do it. So that's how they control your behavior. The second part is they will start controlling your access to information. So that's the I in the bite model. They will either give you false information, half-truths, as I said before. They will spread a lot of propaganda um, and, and they will keep creating and circulating their own materials. They will never allow you to just be a person who um, reads other things that can contradict the things that they are teaching you. You will, you will be told the types of TV you're supposed to watch, the types of things you can watch, the types of places you can go to get information, the types of books you're supposed to read. All these things will be dictated by the cult and the cult leaders. So that's how they control your access to information. There's a lot of propaganda, as I've said. Most of the things they tell you might not be true. Most of them are half-truths, and they're only geared towards confirming the things that they're telling you. They will never give you information that might contradict them. Because if they do, then it's like they are make, weakening their own uh, message, right? So they have to give you information that is very contradictory to what you would believe, contradictory to other people in your lives um, who, who might believe other things. They will make sure that whatever they tell you only aligns with the cults. And that's how they control your access to information. If you listen to people who have been in cults before, they will tell you how they were never allowed to maybe watch TV or watch certain shows or listen to certain speakers or read certain books. They will tell you they were given every inform source of information was dictated by the cult they belong to. So do your research in that and you're going to find that that is like a very common thing. They have to know what, what information they can allow you to see because they need to control you. They need to control your thoughts, uh, your, your access to information, sorry. Um, the third part of this uh, bite model is when they start controlling your thoughts. Um, they will make you start using inside language. Um, the narrative that you're given is going to be one that aligns with the group and, and the group's beliefs. Um, you're going to be given so many all or nothing ultimatums when you try to make a decision. They will try to show you that the, 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 group, the group truth, the truth that is believed by the group, is the only truth. And other alternative belief systems are legitimate or they are false, they are evil, um, other people are bad. When they tell you things, those things are wrong. Outsiders are enemies. That is how they will try to control your thoughts. You can't ask and you can't question anything. Every time you have an idea of questioning um, an existing practice in the cult, the cult leader will be like, you can't, you can't question that. And the, and the group will also confirm that you can't question that because um, why are you doubting? What if what you believe is wrong and what you're telling you is the only truth? So that is how they try to control your thoughts. They will use many psychological techniques, as I've mentioned before. You can listen to that episode to learn some of the psychological techniques that they will use to manipulate you and to make you change your thoughts. Um, yeah, so think about it. You, you, they, they, they have very many techniques. They will try to shut down opposing, opposing um, ideas. They will try to make you not question anything because if you question, you are a problem. Critical thinking, as I said in previously, is a big problem. You're not allowed to critically think and, ac uh, and assess things. You are not allowed to raise any doubts because you are seen as a problem if you start raising doubt in the organization, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cult. So they will use very many techniques to just make you change your thoughts, to not have access to your own um, mental capacities, to not believe to not believe in who you are, to not believe in the things that are in your mind, that you, that you know that are true. They will try very hardly. They will try very hard to make you um, believe that what they're telling you is the only truth and nothing else is true. Um, they will use chants and repetitions to indoctrinate you um, with their beliefs. 
they will use a lot of us versus them as i've said before uh, everybody else is always the enemy yeah and uh, you will be led to believe that your protection lies in staying with the group and and if you leave if you go to other people if you talk to other people it's going to be difficult for you to exist without the group the group because those people are bad remember they will fill you with a lot of paranoia a lot of fear as i said in the beginning cults operate with fear they need you to be afraid they need you to believe that the, your only salvation your only safety and security is in the cult and of course threats punishments um as i said rewards and punishments are very common in cults that's how they control you the last part of the bite model is the emotions and they will control your emotions through phobia again shaming you love bombing remember those techniques that i mentioned previously they will make you feel very special and you're the chosen one and they will praise you for your obedience and then they will humiliate you very very badly for your disobedience or doubt so you've seen that even in cults people will say how um if 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 something bad happens they're the ones who are who are held responsible they're told that it's either because you didn't um pray enough or you didn't do enough for uh, our miracle to happen the miracle we were expecting so they'll always be that thing for guilt tripping you with every single thing that happens that is not aligning with what the cult had in mind they will make you think that you are a horrible sinner a lot of the times they will like, especially with religious cults they will try to make you believe that you are a horrible sinner um that that you're not going to heaven if you abandon the cult you are going to go to hell you're going to be uh, cast away you're going to suffer and then they will flood you with ideas of redemption if you remain faithful and carry out the group rituals if you continue doing what the group wants if you continue believing in the in the leader so that's how they they use those two opposing things at the same time uh, uh, they first make you feel horrible uh they start to make you feel that you are worthless if you leave that you're a bad person that you're all these things and then they tell you about how only they can help you receive redemption and salvation if only you stay around if only you continue doing what is required of you in the group so think about it that way uh there's a lot of pairing of people with other group members for accountability you'll realize that many people who are in cults they never walk alone they always have somebody from the organization even even church if it's a church a cult that is uh, religiously affiliated they, you're going to find that washiriki they are always hanging out together and these members have the duty of convincing you that whatever you're doing and the group and their beliefs those are the right things so they are meant to encourage you to continue believing um they as as i said they will try to convince you that everything that they do everything that they say is the only the right thing whatever you think whatever outsiders say is wrong um and critical thinking highly highly discouraged so that is the bite model of control and that is the fifth step of um the indoctrination process so think about when you joined whatever you belong to whatever group you belong to was this ever a thing that was used on you did did the group and the leaders of the group or movement you belong to ever use this bite model to coerce you into believing the group and doing the things that the group only wants so think about whether they try to control your behavior whether they try to control um your access to information whether they try to control your thoughts and whether they try to control your emotions think about it that way and let me know in the in the description in the comments um step number 6 is that they will use a uh, group pressure to make you conform they will subject you to a lot of pressure from the group uh, such as public confessions or whatever sins or doubts you have so if you are suddenly thinking there's something that you need to question they will make you say it in front of everybody and and as i said it's that thing for spotlighting you they want everybody to look at you so that you can feel that pressure and 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 you can start even doubting yourself they will shame you and they will try to make you conform to the group's beliefs and behaviors um a lot of the time in a cult the need to belong is highly highly emphasized uh because if you don't want to be isolated or excommunicated if you do not um conform to the to the group and its beliefs so that fear of being isolated excommunicated treated differently that makes people uh, conform and because then again they insisting that you need to belong that is an important thing we are going to offer you if you don't follow our rules then we will have to kick you out and you will not have anywhere to belong so it's like a threat of some sort at some point uh, your beliefs of course will will be that uh, your group has all the knowledge and everything nice and the sub, uh, outside groups are the ones that are misinformed and they are the dangerous ones because you've been conditioned to believe that you've been fed a lot of information that shows that 
you've been fed a lot of false narratives about outsiders so eventually of course you're going to conform to that you're going to start thinking that only your group has all the answers and you're going to start believing that honestly you can never survive a day outside of of that group you will never be able to live your life without the support of the group and that is how you lose your identity that's how you completely become integrated into the group because you've you've lost who you are you don't know who you are and you don't believe there's anything outside for you so everything you have to do everything that you do on a daily basis is trying to conform and making sure that you continue doing what the group wants and you step away from who you are because continuing to uphold who you are makes you isolated it makes you be treated differently and nobody wants that and if you've been constantly fed this information that you'll only survive if you belong to this group then of course it makes sense that you would eventually conform the last but definitely not a least step of indoctrination is the total commitment part and at this point you are totally totally completely committed to the group you forsake your former life your former identity in favor of the cult and its beliefs and world views you believe that without them you will never succeed you start cutting off your friends old friends who are not in the cult you start cutting off family members you don't listen to other people you stop reading things that do not conform with the group you stop watching things that open your mind to other ideas you stop listening to other people who might give you different ideas see these tactics for they are they are all meant to manipulate you and to make you a total a uh, committed person to the cult don't fall for them question everything as i have said before and i will highly encourage you that you continue reading continue seeking wisdom continue trying to make yourself better don't fall for these things with that said i don't know if you have had an experience like this where somebody has tried to indoctrinate you into their cult or their religion or their whatever group movement that they belong to and what was your experience with that what what did you do were you able to spot it were you able to notice when they were trying to control your behavior your thoughts your information your emotions were you able to see yourself being isolated by them and what did you do in that experience if you are somebody who has been in a cult before does any of this stuff sound familiar if yes let me know in the comments i would love to hear um your experience um in the next episode we are going to be talking about uh what makes you an easy target to getting indoctrinated into a cult and that's going to answer the question where people keep asking um is it possible for some people to never be lured into cults are there some people who are too smart to not be lured into a cult and all those things so we're going to be answering what is what is um what, what is it that makes you an easy target for a cult or a cult leader to try to manipulate you what do they see in you are there some people that they don't see this thing in and they don't approach them those are some of the things you're going to be answering in the next episode i hope you've learned something from this uh this particular episode I hope you've learned how uh cults indoctrinate people the step by step process and if you have can you leave a comment and share this um episode with a friend let them learn as i said let's spread the wisdom don't um hold it be the person that spreads wisdom in your friend group i uh, will see you in the next episode take care of yourselves and take care of your mental health